Sage de Yesu. Welcome. The 148. 148. The blood of Jesus Psalm 148 The countdown Welcome beloved of the Lord what a joy to be able to come to you live at this gate of time actually it is on the 26th of December 2021 at 12:55 a.m. on the Kenyan time zone. It's a joy to be able to broadcast this even as we are continually going towards the end of this wonderful journey of 150 days of Psalms. If you're just joining in, it's actually we've been on a journey for the last 148 days reading the scriptures every day and um We want to commence the broadcast and before we do so we want to be able to share the video and also to be able to invite you into this wonderful time it's a good day that the lord has made it's a it's a christmas day for some of you and it's a joy to be part of this day this is <clears throat> this song is about the blood of jesus Welcome beloved of the Lord. The countdown is on. Welcome again beloved well 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 what a joy to be able to broadcast this on the countdown on day 148 and we bless the lord that it is also uh, the mission monday eve and we'll be blessing the lord the more for enabling us to be able to share in the communion and then also get to proclaim the word of god in the mighty name of jesus The word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you the night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray over the elements. Our Father, we thank you for the bread, we thank you for the cup. We thank you Lord for this ability for us to share in the communion table and Lord proclaim your death until you come. We also pray that you will guide us throughout this broadcast and that you will minister to us for indeed it's a countdown not only of the 150 days of Psalms but also into a new year. So we want to thank you that you're going to lead us into this and give us truths from your word that we'll be able to read and be able to understand and hear what this, the spirit is saying to the church. So we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's partake of the bread. Amen. 
Let's protect of the cup. Psalm 148. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 148. The countdown. The countdown. We bless the Lord. Psalm 148. What a blessing to be able to proclaim this, especially at such a time as this. It's 1 in the a.m. here in the Kenyan time zone, and we thank God that it is exactly at um exactly at what time is exactly at nine they are in uh, in in lagos and we thank god also for the people in the nations of the earth we thank god for the people of istanbul we thank god for the people of uh, oklahoma we thank god for the people of tripoli tripoli libya syria also oklahoma the people of oklahoma are now celebrating christmas it's around 4 p.m in oklahoma over there it is also in bucharest it's exactly midnight right there we thank god for the people of nicosia it's also midnight we thank god also for the people of nairobi where i am dwelling right now we are coming to proclaim this at 1 a.m we thank god for budapest we thank god for Bono airs, it's still Saturday. We thank God that God made this mystery called time. But one beautiful thing is that in the, in the, in the spirit realm, what exists in the spirit is seasons. What exists in the spirit, there's no calendar there. There is time and chance in the realm of the spirit. We thank God that also in that place, there is also something else called seasons. In that place called the, the, the spirit realm, there's also what is called eternity. So you are spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So that is what makes us human. And one of the things that the word of God is beautiful to do is that it is the sword. It's a double-edged sword. It divides between the spirit and the soul to the dividing of the joints and the marrow and judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So beloved, as we are gathered here at this time, we say God is so good. We say he's so good as we do this countdown. We honor the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will sound the trumpet. Nathaniel Basse, Nathaniel Basse, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Basse. <laughs> oh my God, we can do this all day. Let me tell you that we are so blessed to be in the presence of the Lord, especially on a countdown like this, exactly five days to the end of the year, and also exactly two days away from the end of season four. We know that every task God gives, every assignment God gives, there's a huge reward attached to it. Not only in the afterlife, but also in this one. We bless the Lord for giving us that capacity to be able to stay committed uh, throughout the year of 2021 to, to, to sing out and to read out the Psalms and to come here without, without fail. And we thank God that season five is starting immediately after this and God is going to help us on how to go about that. Psalm 148. One. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, 
and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains, you Mount Kenya, you Mount Kilimanjaro, you Mount Meru, you Mount um, Everest, all the mountains of the earth, the scripture commands, it says that you mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, you mango trees, you apple trees, you coconut trees. <laughs> we give glory to God. That you fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all creatures, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of of all his saints, of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalms 148. We are going out to Proverbs 18. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. What a joy. What a blessing. What a joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Singing. Can you worry about my baby? You are my joy and peace. You have been so good. You have been so kind. Psalm 148. A proclamation for you to command everything to praise the name of the Lord. Is from the high sevens all the way to the creatures that are walking down. And then we come to verse 14 that says, And he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. We go now to proclaim Proverbs 18. It says, An unfriendly man pursues selfish gain. He defies all sound judgment. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, <clears throat> but delights in airing his own opinions. Proverbs 18 verse 3. When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes disgrace. Proverbs 18 verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. Proverbs 18 Verse number 4 takes us also to Psalms 18, verse number 16, which tells us this. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of great waters, out of deep waters. It says that the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. In Psalm 18, verse 16, it therefore means that God rescued David out of great waters, out of great words of mouth of men. But the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. So, Proverbs 18 verse 5. It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the innocent of justice. Proverbs 18 verse 6. A fool's lips bring him strife. And his mouth invites a beating. Proverbs 18 verse 7. A fool's mouth is his undoing. And his lips are a snare to his soul. Proverbs 18 verse 8. The words of a gossip are like choice muscles. They go down to a man's innermost parts. Proverbs 18 verse 9. 
one who is slack in his work is brother to the one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth, Proverbs 18 verse 11, the wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it an unscalable wall. Proverbs 18 verse 12, before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honor. Proverbs 18 verse 13, he who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. A man's spirit sustains him in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear? Proverbs 18 verse 14, I encourage you, if you are there watching me and you are sick, I want you to build up your spirit. Maybe you are not even able to read, but you can listen. Listen to the words of God. Listen to audio of your Bible. Listen to this broadcast. It's purely, majority of it is the word of God. Because a man's spirit sustains him in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. Proverbs 18 verse 15. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge. The ears of the wise seek it out. Proverbs 18 verse 16. A gift opens the way for the giver and ushers him into the presence of the great. Proverbs 18 verse 17. The first to present his case seems right until another comes forward and questions him. Proverbs 18 19. Casting the lot settles disputes and keeps strong opponents apart. Proverbs 18, 19. An offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city, and disputes are like the bad gates of a citadel. Proverbs 18, verse 20. I love this part of Proverbs. It says, from the fruit of his mouth, a man's mouth is filled with the harvest from his lips. He is satisfied. The tongue has power over life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18 verse 23, a poor man pleads for mercy, but a rich man answers harshly. Proverbs 18 verse 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 24. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. That friend who sticks closer, his name is Jesus. For a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, 17. John 15. From verse 13 to 15, John 15, from 13 to 15, it says, Greater love has no one than this, that he may lay down his own life for the sake of his friends. You may have friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Proverbs 15, 14. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what master's business Instead, I have called you friends. So, these friends that we are with the Lord Jesus Christ is when we do his command. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We head out to this wonderful, beautiful book, Ecclesiastes. Hallelujah! The six-pack is getting a plus in season five. Six-pack plus coming up. In season five. That's right. You are my love, my You are my joy and peace. You have been so kind. You have been so kind. this 
part. Listen to this. Aha. Uh -huh. Goodness, your goodness is over me. Your mercy, your mercy, you gave to me when you gave your blood. You have been. Hallelujah. What a people. Your goodness. Your goodness. We are coming on to your goodness. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. It says, The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Verse 3. What does man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the east but the earth remains forever. Verse 5. The sun rises and the sun sets and he hurries back where it rises. Ecclesiastes 1 6. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams, I love this one. Hey, Ecclesiastes 1 7. All streams. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for surviving the storm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we survived the storm. Thank you, Jesus. It says, hey, all streams flow into the sea. Yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome. More than one can say. The eye, the eye, the eye, the eye never has enough of seeing. Nor the ear is full of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Verse 10. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago it was here before our time there is no remembrance of men of old and even those who are yet to come they will not be remembered by those who follow i the teacher verse 12 was king over israel in jerusalem i devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven what a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, are chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be correct, cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. And the more the knowledge, the more the grief. The countdown is here, people. And I'm blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. We go now to the book of Genesis. Genesis, 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 Genesis chapter 46. Genesis 46. That is the uh, fourth, fourth chapter we are reading. The benefits of reading the word of God out aloud is that you gain faith. If at all you are looking for faith, to do anything extraordinary, then look for the word of God to listen to. And not just audio, but read it for yourself. Because when you read it like I am doing, it produces faith. And faith, when set into action, gets you the desired effect that you are looking for. So when you find time to read out the word of God aloud, and especially if you have a circumstance like sickness and all that, Google for all the verses about sickness and be able to read them aloud. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Welcome, Sister Grace. 
our brother and sister Jasmine also. It says, verse 46, Genesis 46, verse 1. So, listen in. So Israel, I'm reading from the NIV 20, uh, 1984 version. So Israel set out with all that was his. And when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifice to God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father. He said, don't be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Then Jacob left Bathsheba, and Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport him. They also took with them their livestock and possessions they had acquired in Canaan, and Jacob and all his offspring went to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons, his granddaughter, his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. Genesis 46 verse 8. These are the names of the sons of Israel, Jacob and his descendants who went to Egypt. Reuben, the firstborn of Jacob, the sons of Reuben, Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jakin, Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, the sons of Judah, Ir, Onan, Shila, Perez, Zerah. But Ir and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez, Hezron, and Hamul. The sons of Issachar, these guys, Issachar, these people, hey, they were people who understood the time. So they say, the sons of Issachar, Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron, the sons of Zebulon, Sered, Elon, and Jahelel. These are the sons Leah bore to Jacob in Padan Aram, besides his daughter Dina. These sons and daughters of his were 33 in all. And Jesus lived for 33 years. Nothing in the scriptures happens by chance. Genesis 46 verse 16. The sons of Gad, Gad Zephon, Haggai, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Ereli. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Beriah. The sister was Sariah, the sons of Beriah, Heber and Malkiel. These were the children born to Jacob by Zilpah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Leah, 16 in all. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. In Egypt, Manasseh and Ephraim were born to Joseph by Asenath, daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Beka, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Eshi, Roshi, Mupim, Hupim, and Ad. Genesis 46:22. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob. Fourteen in all. The son of Dan, Hushim. Hushim. Dan had only one son, Hushim. The sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Gudi, Jeza, and Shilem. These were the sons born to Jacob by Bilha, whom Laban had given to his daughter Rachel. Seven in all. 
All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were his direct descendants, not counting his son's wives, numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family which went to Egypt was 70 in all. Now remember that Moses, when he was delegating to the elders of Israel, he also had 70 elders. Now these ones are 70 as well. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to uh, Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Genesis 46 verse 30 Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who are living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds, they tend livestock, and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, what is your occupation? You should answer, your servants have tended the livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you'll be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen. For all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Joseph went and told Pharaoh, My father and brothers, with their livestock and herds and everything they own, have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? Says, Your servants are shepherds, they replied to Pharaoh, just as our fathers were. They also said to him, we have come to live here a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now, please, let your servants settle in Goshen. Pharaoh said to Joseph, we have skipped on to verse 47. Let me move on because it's a continuous story. <laughs> Hallelujah, we just done a season, we have just done, um, what do you call it, a six pack plus today. So let's continue. Verse number uh, six, the land of Egypt before you, uh, verse, verse five, uh, Genesis 47, verse five. Pharaoh said to Joseph, your father and your brothers have come to you and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best of the land. Let them live in Goshen, and if you know of any among them with special ability, put them in charge of my own livestock. Genesis 47 verse 7. Then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked him, How old are you? Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are 150. My years are very few and difficult. They have been very few and difficult, but they don't equal the years of pilgrimage of my fathers. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out of his presence. Verse 11. So Joseph settled his father and his brothers in Egypt and gave them properly the best part of the land, the district of Ramses. As Pharaoh directed, Joseph also provided his father and brothers and his father's household with food according to the number of their children. Verse 13. There was no food, however, in the whole region because the famine was very severe. Both Egypt and Canaan wasted away because of the famine. <clears throat> Jacob, uh, Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan in payment for the grain they were buying, and they brought it to Pharaoh's palace. 
When the money of the people of Egypt and Canaan was gone, all Egypt came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes? Our money is used up. Then bring your livestock, said Joseph. I will sell you food in exchange for your livestock, since your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and he gave them food in exchange for their horses, their sheep, their goats, their cattle, and donkeys. And he brought them through that year with food in exchange for all their livestock. When that year was over, they came to him the following year and said, We cannot hide from our Lord the fact that since our money is gone and our livestock belongs to you, there is nothing left for our Lord except our bodies and our land. Why should we perish before your eyes? We and our land as well. Buy us and our land in exchange for food. And we with our land will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Give us seed so that we may live and not die. And that the land may not become desolate. Hey! So Joseph bought all the land in Egypt for Pharaoh. The Egyptians, one and all sold their fields because the famine was so severe for them. The land became Pharaoh's. And Joseph reduced the people to servitude from one end of Egypt to the other. However, he did not buy the land of the priests because they received a regular allotment from Pharaoh and had food enough from the allotment. Pharaoh gave them, that is why they did not sell their land. Joseph said to the people, Now that I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh, here is seed for you to go and plant the ground. And when the crop comes in, give a fifth of it to Pharaoh. The other four fifths you may keep as seed for the fields and as food for yourselves and your household and your children. You have saved our lives, they said. May we find favor in the eyes of our Lord, we will be in bondage to Pharaoh. Genesis 47 verse 26. So Joseph established as a law concerning land in Egypt, still in force today, that a fifth of the produce belongs to Pharaoh. It was only the land of the priests that did not become Pharaoh's. Now the Israelites settled in Egypt in the region of Goshen. They acquired property there and were fruitful and increased greatly in number. Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years, and the years of his life were 147. When the time drew near for Israel to die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If I have found favor in your eyes, put your hand on, under my thigh, and promise that you will show me kindness and faithfulness. Do not bury me in Egypt. But when I rest with my fathers, carry me out of Egypt and bury me where they buried, where they are buried. I will do as you say, he said. Swear to me, he said. Then Joseph swore to him, and Israel worshipped as he leaned on his staff. Genesis 46 and 47, we have covered it in this broadcast. We bless the name of the Lord for allowing us to go through that and uh, bless his wonderful name for proclaiming it in the nations just as it was in the days of Ezra. Just as it was in the days of Ezra. That's how we are doing it. So now we head out to the book of First Corinthians, chapter number five. Let me take a quick break.
been so good If only it been so kind Corinthians chapter 5 because this is a very very serious chapter in the scriptures this I want you to listen in clearly and very carefully because in the countdown we cannot mess up the countdown the one where it says 10 9 8 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There is no turning back. The countdown I'm telling you about, beloved, is that Christ is here. He is here. We are not talking about his coming soon. He is here. And the fullness of time has come. And beloved, we shall hear the trumpet blasting. We shall hear the sound of the archangel blowing the trumpets and saying, Hey, it is time to pick up the church. And them that shall be left behind, it shall be difficult. It shall be difficult. It shall be difficult. Gracias, Eriteran Rosales. Welcome. We are reading 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. That's where we are, so you can tune in to your Spaniola Bible so that we can be able to follow together and be able to see what the Lord is doing in the mighty name of Jesus. He's a faithful God. Very, very, very faithful. Venezuela is tuned in. We love you so much. We love you, Venezuela. We love you so much. And we bless the Lord for connecting us like this. So First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It says, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that does not occur even among pagans. A man has his father's wife and you are, you are proud. Shouldn't you rather have fee, been filled with grief and have put out of your fellowship the man who did this? First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 3. Even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit. And I have already passed judgment on the one who did this, just as if I were present. When you are assembled in the name of our Lord Jesus, and I am with you in spirit, and the power of, the Lord, our, of, of, the, of our Lord Jesus is present, hand over this man to Satan. So that the sinful nature may be destroyed and the spirit saved on the day of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6. Your boasting is no good. Do not know, do you, don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast. That you may be a new batch without yeast as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been crucified. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Not all meaning, not at all meaning, people of this world who are immoral, or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters in case that, in that case, you would have to leave the world. But now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, or an idolater, or a slanderer, or a drunkard, or a swindler. With such a man, don't even eat. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked man from among you. Beloved, this, this chapter is dedication, special dedication to the church. Special dedication to the choir. Hey! Special dedication to the ushers. Special dedication to the pastors. Special dedication to the apostles. Special dedication to the to the evangelists and the teachers and the and the and the and the and the and the, and the, and the encouragers. All those fivefold ministry. Everybody that is in the church. First Corinthians chapter five is for you. That for those who claim, those who say they are brothers, they call themselves brothers, they call themselves Christian, and yet they are sexually immoral or greedy, 
or idolaters, or slanderers, or drunkards, or swindlers. With them don't even eat. They're supposed to be expelled. Yes, men who have chosen to walk in the way of sin and they are in the church ought to be expelled so that the blood of Jesus can rescue them. But their sinful ways be exposed and destroyed by Satan. So that they may be saved. It's there for you. Go study 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 to verse 13. We now go to the book of Revelation. Revelation. Revelation, beloved of the Lord. Revelation chapter number 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, bearing its fruit every month, and the trees of the and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in that city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and he will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his prophet servants the things that must soon take place. Revelation 2 verse 7. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the word of this prophecy in this book. I, John. And the one who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who was showing them to me. But he said, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and all those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. The countdown is here. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through to the sea gates into the city. Outside, Revelation 22 verse 15, outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you the testimony, to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The, sp the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of water of life. Verse number 18. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, 
God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. He who testifies to this thing says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Beloved, that's the end of six pack plus. The Lord has helped us to have a taste of how it would feel like reading seven chapters. I bless the name of the Lord for giving us this wonderful opportunity for us to share on this remarkable season, especially at the festival time when people are celebrating and eating and drinking and all those things. The scripture says, when they think it is peaceful, then there will come sudden destruction. Beloved, the countdown is here. The Lord, the King of Kings, is here. The Holy Spirit is here. But we shall see the return of the King of Kings. So be in a place of expectation. And be ready to be raptured up as the Church of Jesus Christ. Prepare your heart. Be ready for that moment. Because the countdown is on. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It says, if you shall confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That is one of the things that you must know that God loves you with an everlasting love. God loves you with an everlasting love. Romans chapter 10, that's what I want to read for you, and then we shall be able to conclude today's broadcast by the grace of God. Romans, Romans chapter 10. Romanos, Romanos capitulo, verse 9. It says, Quis, quesi confesa, confesares con tu boca cu Jesus es el Señor, ye creyeres, and to corazón, que do, que Dios le levanto, de los muertos serás salvo. Poco, poc to do, aquel que invocare el nombre del Señor será salvo. Hallelujah. Anyone who confesses that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. We see confessares con tu boca que Jesús es el Señor. You creeren, creyeres en tu corazón que Dios le levanto de los muertos. Sera salvo. This is what we need to tell everybody in Venezuela. Venezuela, Jesus loves you so much. And I'm so glad that I will be coming to you at the appointed time. I will come to you, Venezuela, physically, not only the way I'm coming to you now. Beloved, I want to pray and now ask you to come to the Lord. Revelation 22:20 20 says, Yes, I am coming soon. I want you to pray. Say this with after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer on the 26th of December 2021 at 1.54 a.m. in the Kenyan time zone, 
or if you have re prayed it on the 25th of December 2021, whichever time you have prayed that prayer, you are now born again. You are a child of God. And we pray and we are so excited because God has answered prayers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we go on, we glorify the Lord and praise his holy name. I will be traveling for the last mission Monday. And I thank God that it's going to be full of signs and wonders already. I've seen God at work today. Uh, earlier, earlier before this broadcast, I saw God at work. And I thank God that we are also having to run our race with endurance. Run us to get the price. As it says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. We must run to get the price. Let me just see if I can, if I can get that in, a, in, in, our, in our other translation. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is a Philippians. Philippians is called... Um, Philippenses, Philippenses 3, verse 14. He uh -huh. says, Prosigo a la meta, al premio del supremo. Y lama miento de Dios en Cristo, Jesús. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is what we must always remember. Each one of us has been called out to do some work. Prosigo a la meta. Al premio del supremo. Il amamiento de Dios en Cristo Jesús. That not I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. That is uh, Philippians 3 verse 14. I leave you with that and also want to ask for your prayers as I will be traveling and also ask for um, thanksgiving. We need to thank God. For allowing us to be able to broadcast two seasons in this year of 2021. That means we have only skipped 65 days in this year. Because the two seasons are 300 Psalms. So we thank God that the whole year we have been doing these uh, seasons. And we thank God that we are on to another season next year. And we are starting it on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? The 29th. That's when we start season 5. I'm very excited about it. God is going to do great things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless him. Ha -ha! <laughs> Let me tell you, beloved, we are trusting God and thanking God for healing us in totality. And if you are there, you are ailing in your body. We thank God for our sister, our mom, Jeanette. The Lord has continued to bring healing to her. We also want to thank God for the wonderful family of Barnabas, over 19 people that had been touched by this virus. God has kept them safe and there has been no fatality. We also want to praise God that the Lord has brought answers to prayer by enabling me to travel for one last time, this last mission. We thank God that we'll be able to do a mission Monday uh, to this particular place. And I thank God that he'll, he'll be able to enable me to arrive there. We thank God for fair weather 
that the road will be okay, everything will be fine, that God will help us by his grace and we will see his majesty. So, beloved of the Lord, I am Malcolm David. Thank you so much for your support. On PayPal, it's MalcolmInChrist at Gmail. On M-Pesa, you can use the number plus 254-722-087-087. You can also use it for World Remit, for Send Wave, for um, all those other money transfer avenues. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey! Hallelujah! Shalom! Shalom! Come on, celebrate Jesus! Celebrate! Celebrate! in Nigeria in you are I'm moving up my being you are my life my joy and peace you have been so good you have been so kind <laughs> in you the reason I can lift my hands you the lead and the lifter of my head you will testify the cross on the cross hey your goodness your goodness is over me your mercy your mercy you gave to me when you do yeah you have been so good hallelujah hey we worship you the king so good in 2021. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Hey! If you run, you run, you run out my me. You are my life, my joy and peace. You have been so good. You have been so kind. Reason I can lift my hands. You are my glory, reason of my head. Hallelujah. Now listen to that one. Listen there. Humble us. Hey, your goodness, your goodness is over me. Your goodness, forgiveness, you gave to me when you shed the blood on the cross. for watching beloved thank you so much we'll see you in the next video Kwaheri. adios 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 shalom